Just this morning, I was with a group of hardware store owners, and there was a guy who wanted to open up a brand new hardware store on the north side of the city, and he was waiting one year for permits. That's unacceptable. That's outrageous. We can change this. I put forward a plan, a jobs plan, that calls for re reorientation of City Hall to make it get behind forming uh, businesses that want to come here and expand. We're not doing that now. We're losing opportunity after opportunity after opportunity. We have 14,000 parcels of land in this city that pay no taxes. We should give those away, if necessary, to bring companies and jobs onto those parcels. It's time to give working families a 20% cut in the sales tax. If I might, 9.75 to 9 is not a 20% cut. Secondly, it makes no sense to call this a, a luxury tax if the way it's described right now, as far as I understand it, is to charge that same single mom for child care, new 9%. To charge that same single mom to take her pet to the groomer to get clipped, 9% more. I don't understand it. I don't think people can take it anymore. Did you earn $320,000 they six meetings? That, that was what they paid at the time, like I was paid like all the other 20 Did you feel bad but, about it? Did I feel bad? Did you earn it? Well, I, as, I, as I said to you, uh, Bruce, I was a vice chair of the Chicago Housing Authority. We were doing something innovative here. We tore down all the high-rises, put in mixed income. And the reason I was uh, asked by President Clinton is because he wanted some approach on that as it related to Freddie Mac. And that's what I did in 2000, ten, a little close to 11 years ago. Mr. Chico, you were one of the main partners your, in a I law firm. Hear, I didn't hear an answer to your question. I mean, I've been waiting. We've got one for you. Okay. Ms. Brown, yeah. how will you handle the budget crisis? Well, I, first of all, I would take issue with calling it a crisis. Um, we have budget uh, problems and issues to resolve for certain, but I wouldn't go so far as to call it a crisis. Oh, Mr. Chico, is it a crisis? I believe it is, uh, but not one I haven't seen before. I'm the only person on this panel this evening that has put a municipal budget together. In fact, I've put 16 of them together, and each and every one has had a surplus. There's no doubt about it. You have to overhaul the city government operation. Start with a plan first and have the budget meet the plan. We have excessive management in our, in our city system. That has to be uh, eliminated. We have functions that are duplicative. We have functions we're no longer going to be able to perform. I don't, this is not a personal thing against Miguel, but the city clerk's office, in my view, is a relic. We can't, it used to be used to balance the ticket. Now we have to use it to balance the budget. I believe so strongly in the future of our city. I'm from our neighborhoods. I know we can do this. There's no doubt about it. Our problems are large financially at the city and the public schools. But I'm very, very optimistic. But it won't get done by wishful thinking or an idea here or an idea there. It takes plans. It takes planning so that we're following a path to get there. I'm very, very proud of my career of having dealt with these issues, of having balanced city budgets, 16 of them, 16 municipal budgets balanced with surpluses. This is the kind of experience that we need to go into these situations, put these budgets back in shape, and give us the tools that we need to bring jobs to our city, bring the police and other programs that we need to make our neighborhoods safer, and to make sure that families stay in the city. We don't want to lose people. This is a really, really critical thing. And they won't stay if we don't offer them quality education, good jobs, and public safety. And I'm prepared to bring each of those three to our city that people have confidence that we are going to have a bright future.